Hi all and welcome back to my channel. As the title implies, today I will be discussing the Kurds and the works of Masudi. For the sake of completion, this time I will be including his accounts on the southernmost Kurds, so those in the areas of the Lors. But first, who was Masudi? Masudi was an Arab historian born in 896 in Baghdad. He traveled across the Islamic world and even beyond. He was born in an intellectually rich environment and met individuals from all kinds of backgrounds. As such, he wrote his Muruj al Dahab or Madain al Jawhar, meaning Meadows of Gold and Mines of Gems, an incredible work containing information on history, different religions, and ethnicities. This work was apparently completed in 947. The version I will be consulting is Prairie d'Or, a 19th century French translation by de Ménard and de Courtet, published in nine volumes. There is also an abridged version in French called La Brigée de Merveille, and importantly, Mossoudi kept on collecting information until his death in 956. Shortly before his death, he finished his Kitab Abdambi, while Ishraf, meaning Book of Admonition and Revision. The French version I'm consulting is called Le Livre de l'Avertissement et de la Révision. All these works are freely available. As always, we will generally focus on accounts in which the Kurds are specifically mentioned. However, Masudi also has many interesting things to say about Manichaeans, Choramites, Dilamites, Kharajites, and others. One important thing to note is that due to the Arabic script, names of localities, tribes, persons, and so on, can be read and thus Latinized in a variety of ways. There are some studies on the Kurds, which incorporate Masudi's work, which therefore provide divergent readings. In Volume 1, the Kurds are only mentioned in the description of the Table of Contents, announcing his discussion of why the Arabs live in the desert and the Kurds in the mountains, as well as the origins and history of the latter. In Volume 2, the Kurds are not specifically discussed, though he does mention the 6th century Parthian ruler Baram Chubin, who in some sources, as we have seen before, is called Kurdi or Gordi. When discussing Bahram's retreat to Khorasan as a result of being defeated by Khosrow II, called Eberwis in this text, Masudi notes the following. Among the devoted soldiers that accompanied him was his sister called Kurdiye, who equaled him in courage, in talent at handling a horse, and who had valiantly assisted her brother in multiple expeditions. However, Khosrow II, through a ruse, had managed to have Bahram killed in Khorasan, and it was claimed that his head was put on the portal of the palace's court. Masudi then continues, Kurdiye left the country of the Turks with the companions of her brother, on the way, she had quarrels with the son of Hakan. Thereafter, having received a letter from Eberwis that ordered her to kill Bostam, uncle of the king, who governed Dailam and Khorasan, she fulfilled that mission while Eberwis avenged the death of Hormuz, his father, by killing his second uncle. Kurdia finally arrived at the court of Eberwis, who married her. Masudi here, of course, provides a very abbreviated account of these events. To note one thing, Kurdia had also married Bostam and the latter would increase his status and attract more clans to him as a result. There is also an alternative account of his death, where he was killed by a Heftalite called Pariovk rather than by Kurdia. In Volume 3, the Kurds are first mentioned in a summation among other peoples. And a bit later in this volume, Masudi discusses the reasons for the Arabs' nomadism. Among them, he says, it was claimed that this was the most noble way of living, and settled life was scoffed at. Nomadism kept one strong, was healthier than city living in many ways, as well as safer among other benefits. The Arabs, says Masudi, best exhibit the qualities a noble nomad was expected to display. He says that this was also the reason that the fragments of the Kurdish race and mountain-dwelling tribes distanced themselves from savage peoples and others who had settled in the flat and united lands. Effectively, the customs of the races established in the mountains and valleys more or less vary because of the elevation of their country. And just like these countries have no homogeneity in their topographical configuration, the men living there participate in the rustic and wild nature of the soil. Though strangely worded, this is a very important passage. Masudi, of course, realizes that the Kurds' diversity is due to their mountainous lands. Also, one must note this common distinction between urbanite and nomad, both of which, throughout history, have often regarded each other with this spice. Masudi also discusses legends of origins for the Kurds. Let us talk now of the race of the Kurds and its branches. There is no agreement on their origins. According to some, they descend from Rabia, son of Nizar, son of Ma'at, son of Adnan, 
son of Bekr, son of Wa'il. From ancient times they had separated from the Arabs as a result of particular events, and established themselves in the mountains and valleys, besides cities of Persia and other foreign nations. There they forgot their primitive language and adopted a foreign language. Since then, each tribe speaks in a particular dialect. Others pretend that the Kurds descend from Modar, son of Nizar, who are the forerunners of Kurt, son of Mart, son of Sasa, son of Hawazin, and that they emigrated from the country in remote times as a result of conflicts with the Ghassanids. Others think that they are the descendants of Rabia and of Modar, that retreated into the mountains to look for water and pastures, and abandoned their mother tongue through contact with foreigners. These are well-known figures of Arab lineages. The assertion that Kurds descend from Arabs will strike one as strange at first, however this is quite typical for the period. Such lineages were made up for Dilamites and other peoples as well. In the early Islamic period, discrimination against all Ajem or non-Arabs was not uncommon, and claims of Arab descendants therefore could heighten prestige and enable further integration into the Islamic world. Moreover, they would grant one legitimacy concerning the right to rule for dynasties and to exert religious authority as in the case of so-called Sayyids. Throughout the Islamic world, it's common for such religious leaders to have their lineages in writing, though it's known that throughout history, these lineages have often been forged in order to obtain the aforementioned benefits. It appears that Arab historians progressively abandoned the assertion that Kurds descend from Arabs in the following centuries. Note that Masudi here also indicates that the Kurds spoke different dialects and also seems to know of the linguistic connection between Kurdish and Persian. Masudi then continues. Others have them descend from enslaved girls of Solomon, son of David. When this king was robbed of his crown, the demon named Jasat attacked those of his slaves who were infidels and made them mothers, the slaves believing that God had protected them against his attacks. Solomon, when God crowned him, learned that these slaves had brought on the world children coming from this coupling with the demon. He exposed them to the mountains and valleys and allowed the children to stay with their mothers. Their family got bigger over time and became the originators of the Kurds. This is another well-known legend on the Kurds and no doubt the origin of the idea that Kurds are the so-called children of the jinn, as can also be seen in Shiite hadiths. The similarity of Karat to disperse to Kurd has also been noted by multiple authors. Hereafter, Masudi discusses the famous legend involving Zahak. Then, the minister of the tyrant every day slaughtered a ram and a man, and mingled their brains to nourish the two serpents born on the shoulders of Zahak. The Persians, who escaped the torments, fled into the mountains, and there remained in a savage state. Later, they allied in those surroundings and gave birth to the Kurdish family. The Kurds of today are their descendants, divided into multiple tribal fractions. Note, perhaps a gem was used in the original instead of Persian. We've already seen this legend being discussed by authors of the 9th century, and it would remain present all throughout further history. Also note that these legends provide very different origins for the Kurds, but have very similar conclusions. Masudi then continues. To come back on the Kurds, the most widespread opinion and the most certain is that they descend from Rabia son of Nizar, one of their tribes, the Shuhajan, that inhabit Makufa and Mabasra, that is to say the territory of Dinawar and Hamadan, unanimously regard themselves as descendants of Rabia, son of Nizar, son of Ma'at. Concerning the Majerdan that inhabit Kankavar in Azerbaijan, the same as the Hudbaniya, the Sharat, and those that inhabit the Jabal, like the Shadenjan, the Lazba, the Madenjan, Mazdenkan, Baresnan, the Kharia, the Jabarkia, the Javaniya, the Mestikan, and those who reside in Syria, like the Dababila and others. And it is constant among them that they derive their origin from Modar, son of Nizar. Among the Kurds, there are also Jacobites in the Jurkan, Christians who reside in the territory of Mosul and around Mount Judi. Finally, we found among them Kharajites and sects that reject the authority of Uthman and Ali. Many of the tribes mentioned here are known throughout history. The Shuhajan or Shadjahan was the leading tribe of the Ayarit or Anazid Kurdish dynasty. The Hadbaniya are well known in medieval Kurdish history and played an important role in various regions. With Sharat, the Kharajite Kurds are meant, as is the case with Daisan. The Shadenjan is mentioned in relation to the Hassanwayids. For Lesba, the reading Luria has also been given, meaning, of course, the Lors. The Madenjan or Mazenjan is a tribe linked to the Humaydi tribe, active in Arbil, and the tribe with the same name also resided at Fars. The Khali has often been corrected to Jelali, 
whom we've already seen in the late 9th century at Sharazur. With Jebarkia and Javania, plausibly the Jebar and Jafam or Jaf tribes of southern Kurdistan are meant. And several authors have noted how Debabile probably should be restored to Dumboli, again a Kurdish tribe known throughout history. The Jacobites we have already seen in the 9th century at Balat near Mosul, and the Jurkan are possibly the Jirki tribe of the Hakkari Kurds. I'm uncertain as to the location of Kenkavar in Azerbaijan. There is a Kenkavar near Keramansha and also a town with the same name southwest of Lake Van, both of which do not lie in historic Azerbaijan. There appears to be a small village with the name in East Azerbaijan, but I couldn't find anything about its history. Masudi also has a chapter on the spread of the Arab Ast tribe. It is evoked how a diviner by name of Amran gave advice on different families of the Ast on where to settle. For those who liked grand undertakings, possessed a robust camel and a new provision bag, he advised to go to the fortified castle of the country of Oman. Those who were to settle there were called Ast of Oman. Those that did not possess any of those things had better gone to the canyons of the mountains inhabited by Kurds, the country known under the name of Hamadan. The tribe of Wadia, son of Amr, chose that part and became mingled or confounded with the inhabitants of that country. Those that liked business, work, governing, authority and could withstand the strikes of fortune were advised to go to Batan Mar. These were the Khuzaids. Note that Batan Mar is the Mar Valley in the Hejaz. So in this account, the assimilation of an Arab clan among the Kurds seems clear, as well as their relative remoteness. Were the poor ones sent to Kurdish areas because one could survive here with little, or because the region was associated with poverty, I wonder. In volume 4, there are no passages on the Kurds as far as I could find. As such, we continue to volume 5, in which he discusses the Kharajites. We have mentioned the countries they inhabited, like the province of Sinjar, Talafar and Diarabia, Asin, Babazic, Al Haditha, in the neighborhood of Mosul, the Kurds diffused in Azerbaijan and known under the name of Shorat, the conquests of one of them, Aslem, nicknamed Ibn Shadlawai, and the states of Ibn Abisaj in Azerbaijan, Aram, and Armenia. This no doubt refers to the Kurdish leader Daisan of the early 10th century. We have briefly seen last time how Ibn al Athir asserted that Daisam's father had been a companion of Harun the Kharajite, but fled into Azerbaijan after the latter's death and married the daughter of a Kurdish chief. This Daisam indeed controlled parts of Azerbaijan and was active in several neighboring regions and was noted for his Kurdish followers. We will see more of him in the future. Mosudi later in this volume also mentions a bizarre story of a fellow who complained about people who accumulate wealth or something, who might have been a Kurd. In any case, moving on. In volume 6, Masudi discusses the Caliphal family and mentions Jafar the Younger, son of the Caliph Mansur, by the Kurdish woman named Lubabeya in other sources, along with some of his brothers by names of Isa, Suleiman, and Yaqub. Remarkably, Masudi in his discussion of the Khuramites notes that one of their groups was called Kurdukiya. However, in the Tanbi, this is given as Kudakiya. Therefore, this might not necessarily be related to Kurds. In volume 7, Masudi discusses the Khuramites and their serving in the armies of the Byzantines. According to him, they came from both Jabal and Azerbaijan, and he briefly mentions the leader Nasr of the early 9th century, who in Syriac sources is called Kordanaye. He calls him a Christian convert and that he saved the Byzantine emperor Theophilus during his battle with Afshin. One passage that I missed before and that should have been part of my previous video is set during the rule of the Caliph al-Muntasr, who ruled about half a year, from the end of 861 to mid-862. During the domination of Montasser, Yemen, the country of Bawazic and Mosul, were agitated by the actions of Abu Umut Sharabi, who adopted the formula, there is no lord other than God. He fortified his camp, calling to him all those Kharajites from the Arabia and from the land of the Kurds. Montasser opposed him with an army commanded by Sima the Turk. After multiple battles, Sima captured the rebel and delivered him to Montasser, who pardoned him, made him take an oath, and set him free. In volume 8, Masudi, among other things, discusses instruments and their origins. He states, The pastoral peoples, the Kurds, conceived a sort of wind instrument in which they blow to reunite dispersed flocks. Later, the Persians invented a flute that corresponds with the lute. 
This is an early account of the flute among the Kurds, and indeed the bilur, as it's called in Kurdish, is still widely used. Mosudi also notes the use of instruments among the Dilamites, the Jarmakam, and others. In the abridged work, the Kurds are mentioned once in a passage on Khorasan, which he gives a highly exaggerated geographical extent. The kings of Khorasan, among them are those of Sakt, of Ergana, of Ushrusna, of El Borhas, which is the same as of Abu of Dailam, of Jil, of Lan, of the Kurds, of Chach, and of Transoxiana. These people had multiple kings and diverse religions. The most among them were attached to Magianism and worshipped fire. Note that Jil refers to Gilan, Lan refers to the Alan, and Magianism generally refers to Zoroastrianism. Now we can move on to his Tanbi. Masudi, as discussed in the previous video, mentions Ali ibn David Kurt Rafsadi, the governor of Mosul, as holding forts near the Khabur River. Then, Masudi in this work yet again discusses the origins of the Kurds in the context of ancient and legendary Iranic history. The first is Manuchar, who reigned 120 years. The Persians see him as great and highly esteem him because of certain marvelous acts which they remember of him. He counts between that king and Afaridun, 13 generations. He is a descendant of Iraj, son of Afaridun. He had seven children of whom descend most of the peoples of Persia, as well as various royal dynasties. This is like the trunk of the genealogical tree of the Persians. As such, the Kurds, according to the Persians, are the sons of Kurt, son of Isfandiyat, son of Manuchar. So here we see yet another legend, connecting the Kurds with an Iranic rather than Arab past. We count among their tribes the Bazenjan, the Shuhajan, the Shadenjan, the Neshawira, the Budikan, the Luria, the Jurkan, the Jawaniya, the Baritsian, the Jalaliya, the Musakan, the Jarbakan, the Jurukan, the Kaikan, the Majurda, the Hadbaniya, and others. Spread out over the Zumum of Fars, Karmania, Sejestan, Khorasan, the territories of Isfahan, the Jabal, that is to say the Mahat, Mahkufa, Mahbasra, Mahsabadan, in the two Igars, which are the cities of Burj and of Karech Ali Dulaf, at Hamadan, Sharazur, Tarabat, Esamadan, in Azerbaijan and Armenia, in Aram, in Bailakan, at Bab el Abwab, without forgetting Mesopotamia, Syria, and the frontiers. There's slightly more information here than in Masudi's Meadows of Gold, both in territories and tribes named. According to him, the Kurds were present in the entire Mesopotamia, Iran, the Southern Caucasus, and other places. Extra tribes here mentioned, which are interesting, are the Bazenjan, which was one of the tribes of Fars, which also had his own Zoma or tribal encampments, and the Kaikan or Kikan tribe, another well-known tribe that shows up in other medieval sources and would survive until today. They live south of Merdin. Thereafter, Masudi yet again gives the notions of Arab descent of the Kurds. A certain number of erudite Kurds whom we acquainted when we traveled that land have their race descent from Kurt, son of Mart, son of Sasa, son of Harp, son of Hawazin, while others assert that they have as ancestor Subai, son of Hawazin. However, Harp and Subai, according to the genealogists of the Modar tribe, died without offspring, and Hawazin had no offspring other than Bekr. There are Kurds that believe they descend from Bibiya, Thereafter, Bekr, son of Wa'il. The Kurds occupied in a remote era as a result of battles between them the territory of the Persians. They dispersed themselves among them, their language changed, and they branched out into peoples and tribes. Note how Masudi here seems more critical and nuanced in the discussion of Arab descendants of the Kurds compared to the Medos of gold. Masudi once more mentions the Kurds in summation, and interestingly, there is also an individual named Kurt in an Arab genealogy. The last passage relevant for our video is one that we've seen before. This is about Jafar ibn Mihirjes the Kurds, who rebelled in the Dasan region of Mosul, saying of him that as he commanded a large army and was master of the country between Mosul, Azerbaijan and Armenia, he intercepted communication and augmented the number of assassinations. So that was it for this time. I hope you enjoyed and learned much. Please subscribe and like. And until next time, when I will be expanding on the Kurds in the 10th century. Thank you very much.